Hello and it's good to be with you today. We are going to be looking at the theme of the healing hand of God but before we do let's pray. May the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. When we use the word healing, I wonder what our mind focuses on. I'm pretty sure that it's to do with the physical healing of someone either from illness or from some form of disability. And when we turn to the Gospels, we are bombarded by many stories of people being healed. Just take our reading from Matthew, where in one chapter we have three healings. And if we look at the chapters around chapter 9, there are recounts of many more physical healings. But is this the same nowadays? Well, yes and no. Yes, people are healed, but it's certainly not as it was in the time of Jesus. Yet we still think of healing as just the physical healing. Let's be clear, I'm not denigrating physical healing because it happens. God physically heals and I'm sure we just have to search the internet to find stories of God healing today. However, not all people are physically healed and this can lead to frustration, even anger at God. Why not me? And I don't have an answer to that question. But I think this word healing goes much deeper than the physical healing which some people experience. And I wonder if that was what was really at the heart of Jesus's healings. To answer this, let's delve deeper into our Matthew reading. We have three people being physically healed. Yet I think, and it seems to me, that there's something deeper happening. Let's look at verses one to eight. Here we have Jesus healing a man who is paralyzed. The question we ask is, what was Jesus really interested in? Well, from verse two, I suggest Jesus wasn't just concerned with the physical, but more with the spiritual life of the paralyzed man. Here we have Jesus using the authority of God to first and foremost put away sin. In other words, to forgive sins. This is about changing a person's life from the inside out. The man was most probably paralysed, not because of any physical cause, but, for, but from some psychological issues, from things he'd done in the past. There may have been a feeling of guilt which had built up and had gnawed away at him and stopped him doing things. His body over time became more paralysed. But what is amazing here is that Jesus looked beyond the physical paralysis and he got right to the root of the problem. And before we see a physical healing, Jesus heals the inside first. He brings restoration through forgiveness. The word here in Matthew literally means to send away. It's about sending all one's sins off into the distance where they are forever forgiven. And as the man was released and restored on the inside, the physical healing followed. And then we turn to the story of the centurion and the woman. Here we have two different people from two very different walks of life. We have an official, someone well respected, pleading for the healing of his daughter. And then we have the woman, unclean and impure, based on the Jewish laws. The regulations were clear that this woman was not to be touched or that she was not to touch anyone else. Because if she did, that person would also become unclean. And it's the woman I want to focus on here. Here she was pushing herself towards Jesus, touching many on the way, no doubt. 
But when she reaches and touches Jesus, something special and dramatic happens. There is a shift in what we expect might happen. Tom Wright in his commentary says, her uncleanness doesn't affect him. Something within him infects her. Jesus turns round, sees her and tells her as he told the official that what has made the difference is her own faith. Here is the mystery. Jesus has the power to heal, but those who receive it are those of faith. Think back to the paralyzed man at the beginning of Matthew 9. His friends brought him to Jesus in faith. And the word that Matthew uses for healing in verses 21 and 22 is the same as to save or to rescue. So rather than a focus on physical healing, we have themes here of restoration, salvation, rescue. And I'm sure the early Christians wouldn't have missed these points, even if the disciples at the time probably did. The physical healing is the outward sign of the work that is happening deep within, the restoration of the soul, salvation and the rescuing from certain death. And these themes are very clearly seen in the raising of the official's daughter. She arose, she was restored. We've seen that an inner healing occurs alongside a physical healing. But we aren't living in the times of Jesus. We know the power of Jesus from the gospel stories we read. And although we might not experience a physical healing, when we pray for healing, surely something deeper is happening. God wants us to be restored to him. He wants to heal our deepest wounds. He wants to forgive our deepest sins. You know, the ones we try to forget about. God wants us to be restored in him, all of us, whoever we are. So God wants us all to experience that healing touch in our lives. But it's also something much wider than us as individuals. And it's here we turn to our passage from 2 Chronicles, where the message of God's healing hand widens to whole nations. Here we are challenged to take our faith wider as we think about this healing of the nations. And I would suggest that here in 2 Chronicles, we have similar themes of restoration, salvation and rescue. For us, the key verse is verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. God here is speaking directly to Solomon when Solomon was at a crossroads in his life. He was becoming more and more in love with the things of the world and was in danger of falling into idolatry. God wanted to warn Solomon because if he stopped walking in God's ways, then the whole of Israel would fall into those same ways. The warning here is to turn back, to be restored to God, to find healing and restoration in God by turning away from the world and back to God. And this wasn't just for Solomon, but for the whole Israelite community. And in that return, returning and restoration, God would heal the land. And isn't that a familiar pattern, which we've already looked at in Matthew? The most important part of healing from God is restoration. As we look at the world today, we can see so much that needs to be healed. 
but the nations of the world are blind to the healing on offer to them. Surely our prayer then is to pray for a restoration of the nations to God, to pray that God will bring revival and along with revival comes a turning back to God. Salvation. But before we can look wider, we need to make sure that we have personally undergone that process of restoration with God, seeking God's forgiveness for ourselves. And then we can pray for the healing of our nation, for the forces of good to be at work so that darkness turns to light, where righteousness prevails, where love overrides everything. God wants us all to experience his healing touch. So in summary today, I want to take the words from two chronicles to end with. Solomon asked the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness in the times that the people of Israel would sin. He knew, as we do today, that none of us are perfect and without sin in our lives. And God has answered with these words and with these provisions, which are relevant still to us today. So, to receive healing, we firstly need to humble ourselves, confess our sins. We then need to pray to God and ask for his forgiveness. We are then restored back into our right relationship with God. And as we are restored, we are urged to seek God's face continually and to turn our back on the wrong things we do. God's promise? God will hear us. He will forgive us and he will bring healing and restoration back to us. The very God who made us and set us free from sin and defeat is the very God who will heal us and our land, our land in our personal lives, our land in our families, our land in our communities, our land here in Odeby and in England and wherever else land may be in this world. Surely there is power in uniting together to turn our hearts towards him to be restored by him and to then pray on behalf of our nation and our world for healing, for restoration, salvation and rescue. Amen. <laughs>